Realtors of Reddit, what's the most disturbing history you've learned about a house you were selling? I work in real estate appraisal, not the actual picture taking side, the administrative side. There isn't much real history selling a home will give you. Stuff like suicides and murders do not have to be mentioned in a report. Oddly, believed hauntings do, as long as it's public knowledge. This is the law. I've had appraisers who report to me they've been accosted by squatters living in vacant homes. It's possible your house briefly housed a junkie shooting up in your basement before you moved in. My uncle bought a caravan down the coast on a well-known beach. Just prior to selling it police detectives turn up and turn the place upside down and inside out looking for some sort of information. Turns out the family of one of Australia's most notorious serial killers used to own the caravan many years ago. Not a realtor. Happened to some friends who bought a property. Very old site. About 300 years old which had been part of a convent. The living room of the nuns exactly. The aforementioned place had been refurbished as small apartments houses about 50 years ago. They went to live there and there was some maintenance given to certain places of the property. The common areas. There was a wall which was slightly wider than the others. They began to give maintenance to that wall but the outer layer fell apart. Due to the rain and age, while trying to fix that they found dozens of skeletons of babies. Very little babies and very old little skeletons. Well, authorities and historians came and went by, and they came to the conclusion that the nuns tossed their babies there right after giving birth to them. Lord knows if they were alive or dead by then. Note, not unheard of, old religious orders were very strict about that, and there were even more gruesome policies regarding nuns' pregnancies. Edit. Grammar. The fact that they found dozens suggests to me that a slew of nuns knew this was there and there was a silent conspiracy to use it as they saw fit but keep it a secret. As morbid as it sounds, I doubt any babies placed there were alive. If anyone didn't know about the wall tomb, they'd certainly wonder why the wall was crying like an infant. What a sad, sad story. Not a realtor but I have a friend who recently bought a house. She has lived in it for a year and went up in the attic for the first time to check on a leak. In the dark she could see some kind of painting hung up on the wall. She went to check it out and found a large commissioned painting of Jesus giving the previous owner of the house a hand job. This is in a very Mormon area a block away from a Mormon temple. Not necessarily disturbing but kind of sad. We were selling a condo of a couple who were both 99 and married for like 80 years. Their condo was in original 1968 condition, shag carpet, avocado green appliances, thick texture wallpaper. They were moving to be closer to their children and their already purchased gravestones. They knew death was coming and wanted to make it easier for their families. Pretty sweet. Anyways they were very nice but ended up dying about a year later. The husband and wife died about 3 weeks apart. Classic not a realtor. But intro, the house two doors down from ours was for sale in mid-July and the realtor was showing it to a prospective buyer when this happened. A couple of kids set off leftover fireworks at the bottom of the slope past the development. This being California in summer, the entire hillside of dried grasses caught fire immediately. Now you don't see much of these anymore because the construction material got outlawed. But cedar shake roofs were fashionable for a while. Our development got grandfathered in. So everyone on the last street in the block grabbed a garden hose, collectively put out the fire, and hosed down the rooftops. Except for the realtor, who turned around garden hose in hand to see the roof already on fire of the house he was showing. It was too high and too far along to put out with garden hoses so by the time the fire truck arrived the entire second floor was a loss. A local contractor got a lot of business in the months that followed replacing our neighborhood's cedar roofs. Well not me but a house that my parents own. My father was speaking with the previous owner about anything he is needs to know about the house. The previous owner starts mentioning that a man who lived in the house as a tenant was brutally shot and only made it to the backyard before he had dies from loss of blood. This house is located in a very bad area of our city so shootings are not at all uncommon. Fast forward a few years and we find out that one of the people living in our house was selling drugs. The drug dealer is eventually arrested in that house leaving his wife, mother-in-law, and daughter in the house. Few years more and we needed to kick out our tenants because they hadn't paid rent for months. A few nights after my parents went to go tell the tenants to leave or else they were gonna get kicked out. The house burst into flames. 
a very large portion of the house was in ruins. All the kitchen, one of the rooms, and most of the living room burned to a crisp. Luckily the insurance covered the damage. Thankfully the house has been sold. Last thing that I heard about it is our now ex-tenant, a new one, was not paying rent and got into a very nasty fist fight with the people in the neighborhood. He got into the house completely covered in blood and bruises. They had to call the ambulance to save the guy too. A small word of advice people. If you are going to buy a house always take location into account. Sometimes buying a house in a dangerous neighborhood for a cheaper price can prove to be a big mistake. The oft used phrase in our area is location. Location. Location meaning you can change a lot about a house. Fancy it up a bit. But location. The one thing you can't change. Can be a deal breaker. I've been witness to a few and heard of some others. The first one involves a couple who bought a house in the 1980s. They called me a couple year ago wanting to sell. As we're talking, the wife starts telling me about her difficult pregnancies and how she'd been pregnant many times but lost them all. I feel bad for her, but I'm wondering what this has to do with anything. The husband pipes up and says, after the last one, I didn't know what to do. I came home and the first thing I thought to do was remodel the kitchen. I had to break something he goes on about his impromptu kitchen demolition. Dishes still in the cabinets and everything. The guy was devastated that they'd lost another baby. Anyway, he says he's ripping out a corner and he always knew there was a dead pocket there because the span was like 3 feet. But the closet behind it was only 2 feet deep. He rips out a drywall and finds a ball of cloth. As he pulls back the layers, he realizes it's the skeleton of a baby. It was wrapped up with a teddy bear. He called the police and said they never got any follow up on it. The next was from another realtor I knew. They get to a closing and the seller is late. An hour goes by and he's still a no show. The agent is calling and getting no answer. She knew the seller's nephew who let her in once or something. So she calls him. He drives over to check on his uncle. He opens the door and there's the uncle. Dead on the floor. He's wearing his coat and has one shoe on. He died putting his shoes on so he could go to the closing. And yes, the buyers still bought the house. But it took a few extra weeks to close. Another one from my own experience was a house I was asked to sell. It was a fixer upper, but it was on a nice plot of land. The sellers had some weird relationship going on. She was in her 20s and he was in his 50s. They were married, but she called him daddy and she dressed like a bess. They were not well off by any means, so it's not like she was with him for the money. Anyway, I decided to google their names to see what came up. They'd been busted for running a puppy mill in the garage and all the dogs were discovered frozen solid in the dead of winter and severely malnourished. After that, I just ignored them. I couldn't even talk to them to tell them I wasn't going to list their house. And the last two are the most outrageous. I'm going to have to hunt it down though. It's a long and I posted it a long time ago. Will update shortly. Edit. It's too long. Had to make it a separate response. Hunt around or check my recent history if you're interested. I'm not a realtor but suppose the store is relevant. My extended family used to live in a really old house located just north of London. Previously it used to be Queen Victoria's stop when she was traveling in the area. Im told my uncle, mum's sister's husband, when younger never believed in ghosts or spirits and would be the first one to call it a load of rubbish. He was sleeping one night and was awoken by a man staring at him at the end of his bed, dressed in an old army uniform. My uncle froze for a few seconds, panicked and flicked the bedside lamp on and then the man vanished. He refused to sleep in that room from that night onwards. We later found out that the man was a previous owner who had returned from war to find his wife having an affair. He was so furious that his wife reported to have told her he would do the worst thing possible to get back at her. He took his twin sons, toddlers at the time, went to the back of the garden where there was a forest and shot them both dead before killing himself. The funny thing is that since my family bought the property my uncle had twin sons, my mum had twin sons and my uncle's brother, who is also a part owner of the property, had twin sons. The weirder part is that my brothers and my uncle and his kids were playing near the forest when they were in their early teens and kept on saying they heard boys laughing but couldn't see anybody there, not knowing the house's history. So spooky, I mean, families with twins can be genetically predisposed to having more twins, but wow. 
I work in property management on the rental side, and would frequently do post move out walks to assess damages from previous renters, and make ready lists for new ones. There was a house on my list that had been vacant for a while in a semi seedy area, not a huge deal by any means as it's the middle of the day. I go to the front door, and it was stuck shut, shoulder checked it a few times, and it would give a little but I couldn't get it open, like furniture or something was barring the way. So I walk around back and completely ignore he broken storm door. Oops, leading up to the other entry. The second I open the door I notice three guys standing in the living room around a table. One conveniently had a gun pointed directly at me. I apologized, and politely let myself out. No more than 10 seconds after I get into my car, our maintenance calls warning me that the property has been broken into half a dozen times already and I shouldn't go in alone. Wasn't the worst I've seen, but certainly the scariest. Property inspection turned up a dead body in the attic. It was a suicide. Someone hung themselves. Homeowner thought her husband had left her years ago. I guess he did. My dad moved into a house where we later learned that the previous owner's son killed himself. There was no saying as to whether he lived in the house, but we do know which bedroom was his. I'm not into paranormal nonsense but my sister had that room. Before we learned about the son killing himself, she had all sorts of weird things happening in the room. Alarms going off at odd hours of the night, the TV just turns on shuts off whenever it feels like it. Especially weird when it's at night and you're alone. I don't like going up there for that reason. The previous owner also came home one day to catch his wife cheating on him and started shooting at them. He missed them and you can still see the bullet marks in the wall of the master bedroom. I learned just how extensively the original builder had embezzled from the school district to build the house. People of a certain age would marvel at the fact that all the bricks, flooring, doors, door and window frames, bricks, light fixtures, all kinds of elements were exactly 1920s public school construction. Turns out the builder was the school superintendent and deliberately built the house with diverted materials and labor from a school project 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 Somewhat relevant. When I was younger, probably 8 or 9, my sister took me and a couple of my friends to see Meet the Robinsons which had just came out. It was a fun movie, and we all enjoyed it. So we went home, my friends were neighbors, and we see a police officer in the street talking to my parents and friends' parents. They all looked shaken up. They told us that our neighbor, who was our next door neighbor, killed himself. He shot himself in the head in his backyard. I always thought he was a nice guy, he'd invite everyone over for pool parties and they were always fun. My parents heard the gunshot and called the police. The guy had many wives over a period of time, and they all either left him or died. An old lady moved in with her beagle and lived there for maybe two years. She never really talked to anyone. After she left a family moved in, with three kids. I played with them a lot. I would go over to their house and play video games, or swim in the pool with them. I never felt uneasy there, it was just a fun family, and the pool and having fun was always a nice memory of him. R.I.P. My wife and I are realtors in Los Angeles, San Fernando Valley to be exact. We were on caravan with a colleague who is significantly senior to us and has been in the market a long time. We went to a new listing and my colleague said oh, I know this house in an off-putting tone. We asked what she knew and she said I'll tell you when we leave. It's a lovely little home in a multi-million dollar area of Sherman Oaks. Clearly has had a few different owners over the years, and although it cosmetically needs a lot of work, you would be thrilled to own a sweet home like this in that neighborhood. The asking price was well over 1 millimeter. When we leave, I inquire again from my colleague about what she knew of the house. It turns out a family that lived there in the early 80s was brutally, and I mean very brutally, murdered and tortured in a home invasion. Apparently it was quite a big story in the area at that time, and as I said, she is significantly senior to me, and has been a realtor in LA since the late 70s. But there was no internet then and time moves on. We got a little obsessed. My wife and I are true crime fans, about the house and wanted to see if we could dig anything up. After a little bit of time scouring the internet and newspaper archives, we couldn't find anything. That really bothered me, as a realtor and someone who really tries to be an extraordinary service provider for my clients, 
I want to be able to provide that kind of information to a client. It's so easy now to google something and expect the entire history of that thing to come up. But it's not until you experience a situation like this that you realize not everything is available online. Now for the really messed up part. California real estate law is such that you have to disclose a death on the property if it occurred within 3 years of that death. However, if the death was violent, and you know about it, you have the obligation to give that information to your client no matter when it occurred. But if you don't have that information, then you're perfectly well within the law. I've come across lots of homes where there has been a death on the property, but if it's a normal death, it's usually not a big deal to your clients. However, an unnatural death is a big deal for most clients. All I could think of was the many agents and brokers who were in the house and the agents selling the house, and how probably none of them knew what I knew, albeit after the fact. I'm not a big believer in the paranormal and I'm not scared of ghosts, but I certainly wouldn't want to be the new owner of that house. Imagine spending 1 million dollars on your dream home and not knowing something as horrific as that happened there. I have other stories, but this is the one that always stuck with me. I always look at a home for sale as if I were the one buying it. This one got to me. Didn't sell the house but was managing an apartment and walked in on a guy who was in bed decomposing for 2 weeks over the worst heat wave in years. His head was partially melted into the pillow and his back was full of maggots. Had a couple stiff ones that night. Walked through a house where a hoarder lived and was attacked by fleas and saw a rat in the master bedroom the size of a football. Notice droppings on the bed too. Lady had been living there her entire life and never threw anything away. Apparently, couldn't get rid of the rat either. I've flipped and helped with flips and sales since I was 18. I can go on and on and on with the conditions I've seen people living in and the history behind them. Not a realtor but in my own house. I still live in. My parents bought the house from an old, 70 plus, lady about 19 years ago. One day when I was about 12, I'm 17 now, my mom and I were watching TV about some person living in a house that was haunted because somebody had died in it. I bring up to my mom how creepy it is to live in a house where someone died. She responds back telling me that somebody committed suicide in my bedroom and that old lady was selling the house because she could hear her daughter in the bedroom. I showed a property that had been a drug manufacturing plant hideout for methamphetamine production. When we did an oil tank search to determine location of the tank that supplied the heat of the house, five tanks were located. They were cars buried 10-15 feet deep throughout the property. Inside were large amounts of methamphetamine supplies ingredients, but worst of all, the bodies of four prostitutes were also found inside the cars. From the other side of the fence. I went with a friend of mine to view commercial properties for his startup computer business. There was one in particular that he was very excited to see, as the setup sounded just perfect. It had a large front room for seating customers display, was in a strip mall with several other businesses, and it had two back rooms, one he could use for stock, one he could use for doing repairs. It also had its own portion of the basement, for additional stock or whatever he might need it for. We hadn't been in the door more than 30 seconds, and the realtor started telling us how it was a combo nail salon massage parlor, before it was seized and her company bought it, yeah, massage parlor and seized, you know where this is going. The two back rooms still had the mattresses on the floor, and there were about 8 more mattresses and lots of women's clothing scattered around the basement. He didn't take the property, even though I told him he should have. The looks on the faces of old clients that came in still expecting the brothel to be there would have been priceless. Too late to the thread, but I'm a contractor and recently dismantled what seemed to be a torture room in the basement of a house some clients were selling. Creepy broken mirror included, I've got pictures if the interest is there. Show and tell mate, give us the pictures. I was selling a home marina, before we could sell the house, we had to clean out everything. The basement was flooded for months, so we had to drain that and clean it out, the most disgusting thing ever. It was after a while that we learned the owner of the marina hung himself where we were all taking a break and eating pizza. The clean out after that gave us all an overwhelming feeling of dread. I still think about it when I drive by the place. The stories of stuff in Detroit are a bit funnier and sad. One house we had was broken into. We went to board it up, and heard water running in the basement. It was flooded. But then I heard bumping upstairs. 
Some guy brought her H in the house and was banging her. We had bats, so we made him leave. We also called the cops. Cops never came. The guy kept driving by to see if we were still there. Meanwhile, the house next door was being stripped of metal to sell at a scrapyard. Other stories include getting shot at, having two guys pretend to be Christian helpers who later stole the AC unit from the house, and a little kid stealing my gas can with my name clearly on it. Police came and his parents beat his butt for being so stupid in front of me and the police. That was hilarious. Being from Detroit, none of this surprises me. My husband is a realtor and works with a few lawyers that represent estates. He had one home where a woman had committed suicide via shotgun in the bathtub. By the time my husband got there the body was gone, but he had to have a biohazard team come in and clean up the bathroom. What he said was the saddest part was that the woman was estranged from her family and rather than not have photos of them around, she had turned all the framed pictures around on the walls or put them face down on tables. He said he felt like he was walking around in her life since everything was left just like any normal day. Years ago I worked for an office that listed houses for sale. One of them in an ad I had to create made my hair stand on end. I noticed it immediately as a weird old flagstone 1910s home with faces carved into the chimney blocks. When I was a kid this was the murder house although it was about 3 miles away from my neighborhood. Everyone knew it and talked about it. The story went that in the 1950s a new owner and his family moved in but the husband murdered his two kids and wife. Apparently the police did not suspect foul play and the husband said his family had left him. Years later in the early 80s the property had gone to pot and the man was raising dogs in his backyard. He died in his house and when animal control police arrived not only was the guy gnawed on by some of his dogs but his own nephew later found the man's children and wife in a basement freezer, encased in decades of frost. Imagine my surprise when 9 year old me rode by the place on the day the cops were removing the freezer. I remember seeing it on a blue tarp in the front yard and people taking pictures. That night there was a quick blurb about it on the news. Years later in my 20s while creating the sales ad I learned that that was the first time it was listed for sale since the discovery. The day after my condo received an excellent offer, my realtor forwarded me a newspaper article. In 1991, two drifters tried to hack a man to death in my kitchen in front of one of the drifters 14 year old daughter, then then strangled him, dragged him down the stairs and about a block down the street before deciding to abandon their plan to dump him in the Mississippi. This was New Orleans. They were caught because they did a terrible cleanup job, just turned over couch cushions and didn't bother mopping up all the blood. Real winners. A weird thing about the place was that if I left anything stacked on a certain kitchen counter, it would fall off in the middle of the night waking me up. I figured it was some shoddy counter work and just stopped leaving stuff in that spot. The condo still sold at a premium and on time even after this was disclosed to buyer. That area was a hot market. One of the people is still in jail. He's a preacher now because, yeah. Bought my house two years ago. The realtor said that the woman of the house just wanted to move after her husband had died. Fair enough I thought. Memories and such. The living room had received a new carpet and general the house was is in pretty good shape. Still live here. Anyways we have been living in the house for a couple of months when I get to talk to a neighbor. We talked about my house and she said that it was awful what happened here. I was like what? Apparently the husband was a police officer. But he had some issues. So he blew his brains out in the living room for his family to find. Hence the new carpet. I don't mind one bit. But the realtor could have said something. Okay so when I was doing the rounds looking to buy my first house we had made an appointment to view this little cottage which was totally in our budget. We weren't familiar with the area so we got there about 45 minutes early. Instead of just waiting round for the agent to show up we decided to take a tour around the neighborhood and found another property that had an open house on. The one was so not in our budget but decided to take a look anyway just for shoots and giggles. It was very fancy pants. White marble flooring. Jim, its own freaking hairdresser room. Anyway the property was split level and built on the side of a hill. So I'm super interested in looking at everything just to see how the other half live and I go into the laundry room which was at the back of the bottom level of the house. Off the laundry room there was another door which was smaller than a standard doorway. Lengthways. 
and I thought oh cool, a secret passageway, so I go through the doorway and it's a passageway that runs long ways down the back of the house. One side is the dirt and the other is gypperoak. So I follow the passageway to the end it's very dimly lit and at the end it opens up into a small room which the current owners were using for storage. I nearly crap myself when I spot it. There, standing amongst random boxes of god knows what, was a life freaking sized replica of Freddy freaking Krueger. I knocked the frick out of there and we left very quickly. Suffice to say that we looked at the other property but did not put an offer in. That house is still on the market 4 years later. I live in a duplex. One night I was cooking dinner and heard an incredibly loud bang. Went to the living room to see holes in my wall. Turns out the neighbor next door shot himself with a shotgun. Instead of them completely redoing the walls, they painted over the walls. In red. Nobody will rent side of the duplex. I tell them that story and they book it. I realize I am no realtor, but I figured I'd share. My friends were getting a tour of a ski rental to secure for the winter in Tahoe. They went to one of the bedrooms and there was a mirror on the ceiling above the bed. The realtor wasn't expecting that and tried moving them to the next room as inconspicuously as possible. Apparently it was a pretty awkward tour. Not a realtor but I used to live just outside of a military base and the house used to be a part of it. There were strange bells above all the doors. The realtor said they were old fire alarms. The bells could not be removed and made the loudest unbearable noise when we tried to remove them. One day I was watching the History Channel and the show was about my town. Turns out these were not the loudest fire alarms in the world but alarms for if the overflow of Nazi prisons in the basement escaped or acted up. Not a realtor. I was looking for an apartment in a condo complex for a long time which is never vacant. One day, the manager gave me a call to tell me a duplex opened up. I was happy to hear that. But then she clarified sir, it is my duty to tell you that this was a scene of domestic disturbance, and it resulted in a fatal incident. I looked it up. Turns out the husband killed the wife with a hammer. The dead body was in the house for a couple of days. The management became suspicious when they saw the husband have scratches, if I recall correctly, on his forearms and specifically tell them not to send maintenance men to his home. And if you're viewing a house where someone has died look for the part where the carpet has been removed, often bottom of the stairs, as this is usually where their bodies were found. When I bought my house, in one of the rooms without carpet, just the bare wood floor, there were three paint covered spots. I was told that the previous owners moved out because they couldn't afford it or something, but according to the realtor, they left their two dogs and cat in that room. I guess the cat was eaten, or died first then eaten by the dogs, then the dogs eventually died, so there are paint spots covering whatever stain the dead animals left. That is such a crappy thing to do, to leave your animal to die in a room. If you're not going to rehome or take them with you, the very least they could have done is just let them loose to at least get picked up by animal control, or die free. Not acceptable, but still better than starving to death in a room without any chance of survival. I'm an actual realtor. There was a time in my life where if someone told me a house was haunted I would have reserved judgment and most likely chalked it up to an overactive imagination. However I've seen it a few times in my career, and there are some pretty common threads that are difficult to ignore. Well then, out with it, you can't just leave it hanging like that. The house I remodeled with my dad as a kid, or helped in whatever non-help way 11 year old me could help. Some of my only good memories of my dad was tagging along while he worked on it. After my dad died it was sold and an investor bought it and rented it to a bunch of druggies. They trashed it. Eventually it was condemned because of black mold. Everywhere. Then one of the previous tenants was still living there and overdosed and his corpse was rotting in the house for about a month. Dead of winter so not a lot of smell. Now it has been sitting empty for more than a year. Pisses me off sometimes. Realtor here. Not a house I was trying to sell, but a house that was next door to my last house. It was on the market for about 2 years before finally selling to a couple who have been there about 3 years now. The guy across the street was a retired cop and told me that back in the mid 90s there was a husband and wife that lived there. One day the wife came home from work and realized her husband was in the backyard chopping down her favorite tree. She took a gun outside and shot him dead. She then went back in the house and shot herself in the head. 
Shortly after that there were two other families that lived there where the faster husband died of some illness at a younger age. I swear the house is cursed haunted. There were random times when it was in foreclosure where I would go into my kitchen and a basement light would randomly be on. Never had the nerve to tell the couple that bought it before I moved. Aunt was murdered at 16 in my grandma's house. It was her ex and he also killed himself. Grandma sold it at a horrible loss a few years later when she just couldn't handle it anymore. Mom moved back to the neighborhood years after that, and I randomly met the people who owned it then at a neighborhood car show. Had changed hands a few times since. Told them about how the pool was my mom's 16 birthday gift and OBTW there was a murder suicide in the kitchen bathroom. They sold two weeks later. Turns out their toddler had been talking to an imaginary friend and it freaked them out when said friend had my aunt's name. It had a material defect making it unfinanceable, and the seller didn't have the money to fix it. Honestly, this is every realtor's worst nightmare. Murder house? Met? Busted sewer line? Oh god new uuuuuu. These are mostly from the commercial side, but here goes. Various. Florida mainly. Crack house apartment complex where the previous owner was in jail for fraud. Previous owner killed an officer involved shooting. Current owner was a ward of the state due to advanced dementia and family drama. Site was owned by relatives who can't get along with one another. Homophobic dad tried to screw his gay son out of their apartment building and shopping center. Tax fraud. Migrant farm worker housing with open code violations. The owner preferred illegal immigrants because if they complain, they'll get deported so they keep shut. No tell motel. Owner sponsored jet ski racing. Tenant sponsored jet ski racing. Including the same riders as above, this is a totally different property in a different municipality. Neighbor sponsored jet ski racing. Including the same riders as above, seeing a theme? Welcome to Florida. Shop apartment where previous tenants were sea kids who repeatedly burglarized the shop. Code violations. Code violations. Code violations. Prostitution. We once did a Pentecostal church, too. Not during services. Practically a realtor with how much time I spent doing leg work to buy my house. Creepiest house was the backwards TV house as we called it. It was easily $200,000 less than any neighboring house. It had some fixer upper problems but otherwise a good house. Beautiful atrium. Master bedroom was all windows looking at the mountains. And a pool overlooking the valley. We walk in and no lights work. That is okay. Plenty of windows upstairs to give the living room and kitchen light. We walk into the kitchen and pictures of the family and children are spread out all over the dining room table. There is still food on the table. Dishes aren't done. All their medicine is still in the drawers. It was as if they were abducted overnight by some government agency. We go downstairs and it is very dark. Only a few windows. All of the TVs are turned backwards facing the wall. These aren't flat screen lightweight TVs either. These are the old school, giant TVs. There are notes all over the house about how much they love and miss each other. Love notes to the woman of the house. And a bunch of notes which get more and more insane. It was very poltergeist. It was top top notch creepy crap. We have no idea what happened there but we can only assume they had to flee the country or ghosts. Our first home purchase came with a death certificate of previous owner and paperwork to verify the current owner had legally inherited it. Cause of death. Suicide. Location of death. Home. My new home. A quick FOIA request yielded the police report from the 60s which detailed infidelity by his wife. He also apparently cut a chunk of his arm off to remove the tattoo with her name. He caught his wife and lover in bed. Beat the crap out of both of them. The next day came home and found them both there. This time he locked himself in the bedroom and shot himself in the chest with a deer rifle. No one called for help for 3 hours. Police basically said he got what he deserved. Wife lived there with child and new man for 40 years longer. I suspect he was murdered. Either planned or the guy took the gun away from him. Deer rifles are hard to shoot yourself with in the chest. Full rifle. Not carbine. The door and hardware was original to house and has no lock or evidence of lock being installed. He was a Korean war veteran. And surely knew a chest shot was an undesirable way to catch the bus. The police report was mostly about the wife's injuries from the day before. And they called his doctor and verified he was crazy. 
I am conflicted because I'd like the new owners to have these docks as part of the history, but I'm not sure they want them. Oh 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 finally I have use for this info. We moved when I was in elementary school and after the fact. My dad found out from neighbors that one man had killed himself in what was now my bedroom and another he killed himself on the patio just outside my bedroom. I didn't learn this until I was maybe 13 or so and it freaked me the frick out. My dad flips houses for a living. Back when I was in grade school he bought a duplex that was in foreclosure. One side was completely normal and the other side was disgusting. The guy who lived there before never laid his water bill and peed in jars that he kept literally all over the place. He had no furniture and it was like he never unpacked because there were boxes everywhere that were super unorganized. It was odd because we found out that he was a waiter at one of the oldest country clubs in CLT and made decent money. He left all of his money scattered between his piles of crap. Literally and figuratively. My parents had my other siblings and I go on a scavenger hunt for all of the money and to help clean out it. You. Not a realtor but the house next door to my parents used to belong to this rude elderly woman. She really should have been in a home as she would fall off and then neighbors would have to come rescue her. Or she'd suddenly have some weird task like buying a TV and then calling my parents to take her to buy one then having them set it up thus eating up half of my dad's weekend when he could have been resting. Anyways she was determined to die in her house. And she did. Our neighbor found her dead in her chair. So her only relative, an older woman, came to claim things from the house that another woman that lived a few doors down hadn't already stolen and she sat down and she died as well. Two deaths in the house in less than a week. New neighbors moved in and they've been there several years now. I live in Kingsport, TN and there's an old hospital on Netherland in Road that is now an apartment building with like 3-4 separate apartments in it. I've never lived there but know of people who have. One of the apartments is in what used to be the morgue, and no one lasts long living there because during the night it goes from warm to extremely cold and the lights flicker. It scares everyone off. There's also reports of noises, screams, moans, etc throughout the entire building. My ex-boyfriend's great grandmother actually died there when it was a hospital from a ruptured appendix. It's so creepy looking even from the outside. I don't even like driving by it so I take alternate routes. I can't imagine what it's like inside. My brother lives in a house that belonged to one of the victims of the Columbine high school shooting. The girl who lived there was paralyzed in the attack, and the house was all stairs. Then the mother killed herself, so the rest of the family moved away. For all that, there's not a creepy vibe at all. Several mafia bosses retired to Tucson, AZ and supposedly their houses. Still they have secret getaways and showers and closets in case they needed to escape. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.